Hello math class, welcome back to another lecture. This is lesson two of the eighth unit, solving problems that involve rates. It is pretty similar to our previous lesson, uh, section 8.1. Uh, so what we're going to do is just jump right in. These problems may be, you know, just slightly trickier. Some of them have a little bit more involvement into them another step, uh, but they, have, they generally involve the same principle here. Okay, so example one. Jeff lives in a town near the Canada-U.S. border. The, ga uh, the gas tank of his truck holds about 90 liters, and he can either buy gas in his town at $1.06 per liter or go to the States and fill up at $2.89 uh, U.S. per gallon. Which option um, makes the most sense? Uh, we're going to make some assumptions, and I'll let you know um, what they are as we go along here. But I think we're assuming... No, we're not making okay let's go so uh in the canadian town the canadian town is equal to he needs 90 liters and the price is one dollar and six cents per one liter so i can find out how many dollars that would cost it would cost him 95 dollars and 40 cents canadian so we want to find out if the price of gas in the u.s involving uh, not only the uh, amount of gas that you get, but also the exchange rate, uh, wants to make sure that it is the same. So first of all, in America, we are going to convert our 90 liter tank into gallons. So 90 liters, um, how many gallons are there in a liter or how many liters are there in a gallon? So we want gallons on top with liters on the bottom. In one gallon, there's 3.78 liters. So 90 divided by 3.78 equals 23.75 gallons for our gas tank. Now that we have our gas tank in gallons, we can find out how many uh, US dollars this would um, cost. So we've got 23.75 gallons multiplied by $2.86 US per gallon, which is equal to $69.27 uh, US. So this is in US currency. Okay. So at the time that I made this problem, I think the um, exchange rate was almost one to one. This was quite a few years ago. Uh, now, our dollar is a little bit more, so uh, a little bit less valuable, so about 75 cents on the dollar. So let's say we've got 69.27, doing this on the fly here. We got 69.27, this is US dollars, and we want to convert that into Canadian. And uh, one US dollar, um, one Canadian dollar is equal to 0.75 US dollars. So I'm going to divide 69.27 uh, divided by 0.75. See what I get here. Let's see. Sixty-nine point two seven divided by 0.75 equals ninety-two point three six dollars. Ninety-two dollars and thirty-six cents Canadian. So if I compare that number and that number, they're pretty much the same. You might as well fill up in Canada. When I made this problem, my answer here says it makes sense to fill up in the US, but no longer because of the exchange rate. So it definitely makes sense to fill up in Canada for Jeff. Especially since you'd have to, you know, drive there and spend gas and have the hassle of the border and take your time to do it. So example two. We are going to talk about different rates and what they can be used for and you know different things that we talk about in these units. So describe a situation in which each unit rate might be used. Identify and explain factors that, in, that could influence the rate in the situation. So uh, for A, we're talking about 0 0.05 milligrams per kilogram. It's a very small amount and per a weight. Uh, this unit is often used in medicine for... Um, for dosing, 
right? And you want to use per kilogram because that is a um, unit that you know you can measure someone as, and then you know how exactly how much of that medication to give them. For B, 98 cents per liter. Well, we might talk about um, gasoline in this price. Um, gas in this price unit. Um, in the year 2060, uh, this will be the price of one liter of water, maybe. That could happen, who knows? 98 cents per liter of water. If you buy it in a bottle, that's already the price of it. Um, and then C, 7.2 meg um, megabytes per second. That would be information transfer speed, like in a computer. So um, computers and information transfer. The higher this number, the faster the transfer. Uh, what I'd like you to do is I'd like you to come up with two other units that you're familiar with um, and then like write down what those units would be used for. Uh, so pause it here, uh, do that and unpause it. I'll give two examples, but our examples don't have to be the same. So what I would have come up with for the your turn section, I'll just call it D here, is for phones. Uh, we talk about the amount of money per gigabyte all the time, right? For data coverage or for uh, download speed, uh, we pay money per gigabyte. Um, as well, we might talk about hotels as their rates, which are dollars per night in general. How many dollars does it cost to stay there for a night? So you might have had some other ones, but those are a couple that I came up with. All right, let's do example three. Paula is asked to order snacks for an office meeting of 180 people. Okay, that's my worst nightmare. Uh, she decides to order dessert squares, which come in boxes of 24. She estimates that she will need about two and a half squares per person. Okay, that's a hungry office. Uh, how many boxes should she buy? Okay, so this is a problem that can be done a couple of ways, and I'm going to do it two ways. The first way I'm going to do it is kind of the um, math-specific, math-accepted way if you will, but this isn't exactly the way that all of our brains work necessarily. So what we want to end up is, with is the number of boxes that she should buy. And when I look at this problem, I see uh, one meeting, 180 people. I see two and a half squares per person. I see uh, one box, 24 squares. The only place that I see boxes is like how many squares come in the box. And I want to find out how many boxes I want. So I'm going to start with that. I know that in one box there are 24 squares. Now this is the same as writing 24 squares per box, just flip the other way around. And I'm doing this because I know that I want to end up with the unit boxes. And so I'm going to put that unit on the top. So how am I going to find out how many, you know, squares I need? It says that we're going to need 2.5 squares per person. So I see here 2.5 squares per person. I feel like I can cancel out squares that way. So if I write another set of brackets with a line, and I write squares up top and person down in the bottom. I know that doesn't look like person, but bear with me here. Uh, it says that for every one person, we're gonna need 2.5 squares. Okay, now I'm feeling good that I can cross those out. Right now I'd be left with one box per person uh, for a unit. That's not working for me. I want to know how many boxes we have. And I know that I have 180 people. So I could take 180 people in this meeting, in one meeting. And now I'm going to find out if I cross out people I'm going to end up with how many boxes I need in, in the meeting, boxes per meeting. And that's what I want. So let's do this math. I take 24, uh, or I take 2.5 multiplied by 180 divided by 24, I get 18.75 boxes 
I can't order that many boxes. You can't order three quarters of a box. That doesn't work. So what we're gonna say is we need 19 boxes. You'd probably be okay with 18. I can't see everyone in the 180 people eating two and a half squares of dessert. Uh, that's a hungry meeting, but you know that's what we'd end up with, 18 to 19 boxes. Another way that you can do this is kind of uh, more of a reasoning um, way where there's not as much of an equation involved. So uh, I'm just going to make 24 squares into 25 squares just to make it easy. So 25 squares per box. And I know that I need 2.5 squares per person. So that means that in one box, I'm essentially going to be able to get like 10, 10 people in a box. I'm not actually going to put them in a box, but you know, I can get, I can feed 10 people out of one box. 10 people would eat uh, 25 squares. So if I put these together, I'm going to get um, 10 people uh, per box. And then I know that I have 180 people. So if I need to feed 180 people and 10 people can be fed per box, I'm gonna need 18 boxes. So, let's see here. If I got 10 people per box and I need 180 people fed, I'm going to need 18 boxes. And maybe uh, Paula is like, well, 18 boxes, I know we're a hungry office. Let's get 19 to be safe. So there's a couple of ways you can do, you can do this. You can do it the mathy way up top. You can do it kind of the reasoning way, as long as you explain your thinking. And if we actually look back to compare them, these are the same thing. We've got 24 and 2.5 here doing the same thing. 25 and and 2.5 here, finding out how many per box, and multiplying it uh, by 180, finding out how many uh, boxes we're going to need for 180 people. We kind of did the same thing. Um, but in a little bit of a different way and got the same answer, 18 to 19 boxes. Let's see if we have one more problem to do together. Yes, one more. So, for example, for solving a problem that involves different rates, Amelia walks briskly at six kilometers per hour and she, when she walks at this rate for two hours, she burns 500, 454 calories. Bruce walks slower, four kilometers per hour, burning 62 calories in 30 minutes. If Amelia walks for three hours, how much longer will Bruce have to walk in order to burn the same number of calories? Okay, when I see this, I see um, different units. I wanna make them into a unit rate so I can deal with them easily all the same. So let's see, Amelia burns 454 calories in two hours, which tells me that she burns 227 calories per hour. That is a pretty high rate. Uh, Bruce, on the other hand, it's kind of nice their names are A and B. Bruce, on the other hand, burns 62 calories in half of an hour. So I'm going to then be multiplying 62 by two, the same as dividing by a half, to get 124 calories per hour for Bruce. So Bruce, ooh, Bruce is half the half the burning rate. He does walk a little slower, but half the burning rate. So the second part of the question says if Amelia um, walks for three hours, uh, how many? Uh, sorry, how much longer will Bruce have to walk in order to burn the same number of calories? So how many calories does Amelia burn in three hours? Let's multiply by three. So she burns 681 calories. That's quite a few calories for Bruce to burn. We want to find out how long Bruce has to walk in order to burn that many calories. So uh, let's see, we want a time. So I'm going to want a time on the top of my equation. I'm doing it like the first problem, the first problem I did in, um, in the last one, where I did the first method. So I want in one hour, Bruce can burn 124 calories. And I know that he needs to burn a total of 681 calories 
So these would cancel out. 681 divided by 124 will give us our time of 5.49 hours for Bruce. So if it takes Amelia three hours, it takes Bruce 5.5 hours. Bruce will have to exercise for two and a half hours longer. So um, it takes Bruce 2.5 hours longer. If you have any questions about that, please let me know. Uh, it is a little bit more tricky than the last couple we've done. There's a few more steps. Um, it's a little bit more problem solving. There's not exactly a method to each one. Each one is different. Uh, so it's all about practice. It's all about putting yourself in situations over and over again by doing problems. So there's lots of problems for you to try here in the uh, practice questions. Definitely check out the need to know and the key ideas. Uh, and again, feel free to ask if you have any problems at all. Thanks so much for watching, everyone. I'll see you soon.